Oh, Vuyo Maga is the spokesperson for the Office of the Premier of Gauteng, and he joins us now. Vuyo, good evening, and thank you so much for your time. Firstly, you know, the last time that the Premier at least briefed the public on the issue of a health MEC, he made it quite clear that this post was going to be indefinitely left vacant until the SIU matters have been resolved. That hasn't happened. Does that mean that he's completely moved on from the idea of, of um, Mr. Bandile Masuku ever coming back uh, to be part of his, his uh, cab cabinet? Well, uh, evening, uh, Kathy and the viewers at home. I, I guess there are a couple of things that will have obviously be in place that prompted uh, the Premier to really review that particular view. One is that the Public Service Commissioner, Dr. Uh, Silwane, had actually indicated that uh, there is more crisis in the health uh, department that need an agent look in terms of the management. Also, the necessity to have the political leadership to oversee the running of that particular department. So part of the announcements of the premier was obviously the reshuffle to strengthen the political office of the health department, but also bring the intervention team uh, of experts, of health experts, both from the private sector in the academia, as well as from the national department. And obviously there's an advisory uh, council uh, a team that the premier listened to, uh, the COVID advisory uh, team that believes that when we actually come back from the break uh, of December and January, there is a possible surge in Gauteng. So you needed to consider all those realities and to say you therefore need to have an intervention team to get there, to hit the ground running before the surge arrives. But also you need to have a political management to have a look into this parliament to make sure that we continue to save lives in Gauteng. Vuyo, have the vacant posts that were created in the department also as a result of those who resigned because of these investigations by the SIU and some of the corruption scandals, have those posts been filled? Well, that's the whole point of having to bring uh, that whole intervention team. Uh, that, as I've said, is a couple of experts, uh, you know, from in the health environment, uh, you've got doctors there and also some secondment from the national uh, department because we appreciate that you'll understand that the cfo had then resigned and some senior management had obviously been placed under precautionary uh, you know suspension so it really leaves the department to a bit um, hollow in terms of the decision making in terms of the senior management hence then the premier requested that intervention but also there is a need to have a political permanent political head to actually drive uh, you know the health response, in particular, as I've said, as we move towards the second surge, uh, which is estimated to be around uh, end December, January. So what I'm trying to understand, Vuyo, is that, you know, it's great to have a team, right, that's going to come and support the efforts of the department. But often such a team would be working with the officials that are in charge of various aspects of the department because, uh, you know, there's process that needs to be followed. So in the absence of a CFO and this expanded team that works with its own individual mandate, who then becomes the person, the accounting officer effectively? How are you going to manage some of these processes so that the very thing that you're trying to prevent from happening doesn't in fact happen again because there's a complete deviation from process? No, no, remember there's an acting HOD, so the acting HOD still remains. Uh, we have been in the department. And obviously part of the work that the Premier, if you remember previously, that would have promised uh, the residents of Gauteng that any HOD that comes, including, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, the executive that comes through must go through the vetting process. So that work is done not, not, not necessarily only in the health department, but across the board. So prior really appointing a, a permanent head, but we must actually be satisfied that the vetting process has actually happened because we need to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistake over and over again. Uh, so there is an acting uh, HOD there. So the team, when it comes, is going to come with the already team that is already actually happening there. But obviously, there has been a vacuum that team must actually assist us to overhaul, you know, the health department. Let's talk about what an overhaul in a very practical sense means. Does this mean that you have invited this team to come and look at the affairs of the department, see what's wrong and advise the premier on a way forward? Does it mean they're going to be making decisions as they go along? How much power do these individuals actually have? And again, 
um, the, the, the potential conflict that may arise when it comes to decision making over important issues that they might come to, but that the political head might not necessarily agree with. Just explain where the power begins and ends for this ex expanded team. Well, you'll remember there's always a, a, a differentiation of, uh, of duties. So the executive uh, head will always be there to, to deal with the, with, with the broader management of, um, of the policy issues around uh, the issue of the health. The HOG, as I've said, will be there. The DG of the, of the province uh, will be there. Some of the HODs in the, in the treasury will be there. So the team will have different expertise. So you've got HR expertise there. You've got finance expertise. Uh, you know, you've got the supply chain expertise to make sure that we put systems in place. So this team is going to work with a broader collective. So it's not only to point out, but also to put systems that can sustain us even post the COVID period. But really, the, the department is able to be brought uh, back to its, uh, its feet. Uh, it, it has been struggling for relatively some time. It has recovered a bit during the Dr. Masuku's um, era. And obviously, unfortunately, uh, whatever then happened, happened. Uh, and we want to actually go deeper, not necessarily to say these are the issues, but the issues are, are, are relatively deeper. If we go to the Public Service Commissioner, that's what he has actually advised. And obviously, those are the public institutions that we must take counsel from, and the Premier has actually taken counsel from that. How long do you expect this process to last? And I don't know if you've had an opportunity to quantify it yet, but what are some of the additional costs that it's going to come with? Well, not necessarily uh, quantified it now, but we are looking really around uh, six months, uh, obviously subject to review. Uh, so if needs be, depending on the work that they will have done, and obviously the Premier will inform the residents of Gauteng, that indeed we are actually reviewing that work. So we need to expand the scope, but currently we're looking around the period of uh, six months. And any ideas yet in terms of how much it's going to cost uh, the taxpayer? No, 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 not yet. But as I'm saying, some of uh, the experts really are within uh, the, the institution of the broader government. Uh, so they will obviously be seconded to us and some few will be coming there. And I think when those number crunching really comes, we'll be open to share with them with you. But at the moment, we don't have. All right, Buyo, let me thank you for your time. Buyo Maga is the spokesperson for uh, the Gauteng Premier.